G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's J Dog and Senor Bushman. And Bonjour, today, no. today we'll be launching <laughs> our weekly tips videos that we did mostly all year last year. You Bush, mostly did them. I, I think I'm planned to be an addition, am I? Yeah, <laughs> was well, that the plan? We do live at like 25 minutes away from each other, so yeah. it's a bit hard. But yes, um, I would love to have you on more often, Busher. How You'd are like you? to have me on your tips more often, would you? All oh, right, yeah. So I am actually in sunny Thailand right now, or Vietnam actually, I think. So I'm scheduling this video ahead. So we're doing this actually during the weekend of March 2. So if anything happens in the second round of Marsh games, like if someone does an ACL, we're not going to know about it. So um, we're just going to do our best with the injury lists we have right now. Yep. Today, in fact, actually our boys do battled over at Joondalup, West Coast versus Fremantle. What's your prediction for that game now that's going to be happening two weeks before people watch this? Well, we always seem to win the preseason derby before you guys do really well, so I'll say we'll pull this one out, but you guys have the much better season. I think we'll flog you in both respects. Ooh. The other thing is, guys, make sure you go check out the footy tipping competition. We have the link in the description for that below. Um, so join up. I think we had like 27 people last year. I reckon we can do even better this year. So um, go ahead and join us. I'd like to think I can do a bit better this year in the tipping competition as well. I was floating right around towards the spoon. I'm pretty sure out of like 27 people, like three of the bottom four were the other three members of True Footy. Yeah. And I think I was like seventh. I got beaten yeah. by my girlfriend as well. But uh, you should watch this for an authority on footy tipping. Yeah. All right, should we get straight into it? First game of the year, the yeah. annual drubbing of Richmond versus Carlton. Yeah. Is there any chance Carlton pushes Richmond at the MCG on Thursday night? Probably not, but I'll probably... I've sort of gone with the idea I'm going to pick them every year till it eventually does happen. So I think this could be the year, like... Richmond might come in a bit, like, complacent, just like, yeah, we've won two out of the last three... That's true. Like, I definitely think Richmond are so far ahead of Carlton. Like, it's not funny. Yeah, like, obviously. Richmond will be probably the premiership favourite this year, which is fair. And Carlton, yeah. I think, is still a good chance to finish bottom four personally. But Carlton do tend to lift themselves for this game. The other thing is, and you've got the injury list in front of you, I'm pretty sure Kerno and Mackay are probably not going to be playing in this game. Yeah, that is a very big factor against Carlton. Yeah, so I don't know what their avenue to goal is as well. Um, so that's going to be a real tough it's one. going to be a bit of a mosquito fleet sort of thing. Yeah, no, he plays for Essendon. Yeah, Richmond are fully fit. Personally, I don't really see Carlton unless there's something ridiculous happens, which does happen. <laughs> but logically speaking, I'm going to tip yeah. Richmond to win this game by about 44 points. What's your tip? I agree with the log like your logic, but I'm going to go the gut. Something happens. Carlton by eight. Wow. All right. I like it. Yeah. Stanky first tip on True Footy Tips. We should call this show Just the Tips. Or is that <laughs> inappropriate? No, I think it's People can figure it out. No one would ever sponsor us. The second game of the season is a juicy one as the Bulldogs versus Collingwood. A much better matchup, in my opinion. I would say these two are probably at least top five teams. Would you agree with that assessment? Top five, top six. Yeah, top that's yeah, pretty close yeah. to that. Top third of the league. Exactly. That's probably not a bad way of putting it. From the injury data I have right now, it looks like Norton's going to be in doubt. They might rush him back for round one, but that's a huge out if he doesn't play. And Durea and Liberatore won't play. Beams is not going to be available for obvious reasons. He's taking a step back from the game. Langdon's not going to be playing, and Trelaw is in doubt. I don't think he's going to play either. So both teams do have their injury concerns. The Langdon one seems interesting. I was reading something the other day. They reckon he might have to retire. Really? Yeah. What's, what's wrong with him? I actually didn't write it down. It says knee. Yeah, It's okay. indefinite. Yeah, right. It sounds like it's real sus. But yeah. Ooh, okay. I didn't read too much on it, but I saw like a headline saying it could be bad. Anything that says indefinite and not TBC is definitely alarming on the injury list. Last yeah. year, the Bulldogs pushed them in both times they played last year, and that was before I think the Bulldogs even got good. I think the Dogs Found are prime this year. I reckon, because it's at Marvel, this is the MCG, I'd probably feel differently, but at Marvel, I'm actually going to the, tip the Doggies in a slight upset by eight points. Who are you thinking? I'll back in there. The Pies sort of up and down, up and down. They'll maintain their steadiness, whereas the Dogs are coming into this year to prove a point. Go over the back half of last year's what's par for the course for us now. We have to continue this. They're going to be trying to prove that's their standard this year. So who's your tip? Dogs. Oh, the dogs. By yeah. my, margin. 24. Next up is your boys also at Marvel against Essendon. This is an intriguing battle. Um, what are your instincts about this game? How are you feeling about it? Realistically, I'm not too optimistic, but I'll be interested to see how the new stuff that we've tried to implement looks against an actual team in an actual AFL game. Because in the first Marsh game, it looked great, but it's Marsh. A lot of things look great in Marsh and don't necessarily look great in the actual season. So 
So Fremantle typically start seasons well and pre previous years they've been fucked by injury after like halfway through the season. But this year you've got the injury bat battle straight away. You've got no acres for round one. Jesse Hogan's obviously not available. Hamling, Pierce and Wilson are all gone from your back line. But Essendon also have their injury battle. They've got uh, no Ambrose, I believe. Danaher won't play. And I think Hooker and potentially Heppel are all in doubt as well from what I can gather. Um, so what you're saying, we've got a couple of spineless teams. Is that yeah, what you're saying? More, essentially, yeah, on and off the field. <laughs> uh, the Bombers look good in preseason. They beat the Dockers twice last year, including in Perth. I'm going to say Essendon win this by 21 points. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'd probably say about the same. I'll probably put us a little closer, say Essendon by 14, 15. Next up, you got the Crows and the Sydney Swans in Adelaide. Is this a bottom of the table clash? Are both of these sides bottom 14s? Current, like current concessions, mm. like you obviously won't fully know until we're a few weeks into the season, but they're contenders. Yeah, that's a very political answer. I like it. Um, like whoever loses, I'll say I'll say this: whoever loses will be a bottom four contender this year. Wow, that's a big call. They have a weird rivalry. These two teams is usually the away team wins. Um, whenever Adelaide plays Sydney for some reason. I think Buddy is not going to play in round one. He's had a setback, so unless something happens in the next couple of weeks, that's going to be the case. Because of that, um, even though I don't really rate both of these teams, Adelaide have had a pretty sloppy preseason. Sydney have played one game and got belted by GWS. Um, I'm going to say Adelaide. I've just got a funny feeling they might just eke out in a really disappointing game. And I'll say Adelaide win this by 13 points. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'll probably back in Adelaide myself. They look slightly healthier, like, looking at the injury list. Like, mm. Yeah, Lance, four to six, apparently. According yeah, to so the, yeah. I, as it stands, I don't think Buddy will be yeah. fit. Both of these sides are fit, but Buddy Franklin's probably not going to play. So I think because of that, Adelaide is my team, yeah. I'll give them that because it's at home. They've got to... Yeah, I think they'll change it up and the home team will win. Next up, we have another top of the table clash, or at least in my belief. We've got GWS hosting Geelong at Giants Stadium. Which side is stronger going into this game, Bush? I'm going to say the GWS Giants because Geelong is still figuring out who's going to step up into that Kelly role. They've sort of got, had to do a bit of shuffling, so you got want to see how the cards get dealt now that they've been shuffled sort of thing with Geelong. Whereas GWS, you know what you're getting. They've stacked as heck. Yeah. Even though they've got a few outs, they're still stacked. Very true. So they've got Taranto out and Callan Ward is still not fit. But as you say, the midfield depth they've got is immense. Like they can yeah. just have a couple of players missing at any time. And it's probably easier for them because they've got less selection headaches yeah. to worry about with the, the couple of players out. Last year, they only played each other once. GWS is the only team to win over in Geelong, which is a really good sign. I kind of feel like this is an important game for GWS to win. Getting belted in the grand final to come out and make a statement in round one is important. I'm going to tip them. Um, I didn't write down my tip. I'm just going to come up with it here. I'm going to say GWS win this by 26 points. Yeah, they definitely do need to get this good start. Like you'd want to get that confidence. You want to get the monkey off your back quickly. You don't want to be thinking about your preseason like Adelaide probably were. When, mm. yeah. yeah. When everything went down with them after they had a comparable thumping. So, yeah, I'd probably say GWS. They've got the talent to put the gear and put the, put them to the sword. So, I think they put John to the sword by 40. 40? Wow. Yeah. 40 I reckon they put him to the huge. sword. Fair enough. Next up is Gold Coast versus Port Adelaide at Metricon Stadium. Bush, Gold Coast had two wins from two in the preseason. Is that marsh form a false dawn or is it actually that they've improved? I think they've definitely improved. Like, I've said it all along, they've improved. I really hate the idea of tipping them for the, tipping them for the spoon, but you can't not sort of thing. Yeah. I tip them the spoon because it's just like the obvious thing, but I, at the same time, I don't think they will be. Yeah. Like, instant, like my gut tells me they're not going to be the spoon this year sort of thing. It's pretty much the same logic as me. I don't actually think they'll win the spoon, but it's hard to put anyone else below Yeah, exactly. Them. But I think, like, Metricon, they can start turning that into a bit of a home ground advantage. Like, even if there's not necessarily the crowd they're driving it, they can make that trip up there a daunting one for teams, the weather. But I'll pro despite all that, being nice to Gold Coast, I'll have to say Port probably win this by... 18. Interesting. Yep, fair enough. I think Porter clearly the better team. There's no real debate there in my opinion. Wines is their only injury concern. I don't think he's going to be playing. Yeah, it's six to eight weeks or something yeah. for a shoulder. I think I saw it. But the Suns start seasons well. And last year what happened is they started well and then got cooked for the rest of the year. I'm going to actually tip an upset here. I'm going to say Gold Coast beat Port by five points in round one. All right, three games to go. North versus St. Kilda. Very evenly matched sides, I would say. Who do you think is a better team generally? North versus St. Kilda. 
That's tough. That's a tough question. Do you mean sort of like long term or short term sort of thing? Like? I just who do you who would you rather play? I guess if you have if you're free now. Oh, I think I'd probably take the Saints at this stage because they're mm. a bit less experienced, a bit less cohesive as a unit together. They've had a lot of change, haven't they? A lot of yeah, players go in, a lot of, lot of players leave here. Yeah. Whereas North Melbourne have sort of been steady the past few years, even though they've had the coaching changes and some turnover. North have, I think, recent form over Saints. They've belted them a couple of times, but this is a very new-look Saints side, and you'd have to say they've probably improved. I found it interesting that uh, the Saints are actually favourites on sports bet because I'm actually leaning towards North Melbourne here. I think Ben Brown is an iffy one. Do you have the injury list there? I can pull it up. Ben Brown, calf, two to three. Yeah, okay, so uh, he's going to be very borderline for the game. They've, they've got, they're very unhealthy, actually, by the looks. Yeah, they've got a few TBCs there. Ben Jacobs has those um, uh, concussion injury. Marley uh, Williams till round three. That's true. Cunnington's a test, but you think he'd play. Not too sure what's going on with LDU there. Yeah, um, to be confirmed, that's never... A- promising sign yeah with, with a groin as well so yeah, yeah you're right it could ben be jacobs long-term concussion at the moment i'll stick with my guns i'll say north win this uh by 28 points but i'm actually i, I know i've taken five goals but i'm actually not super confident about it no. i think i think saints could win this but who, who after cares? seeing this injury list and knowing the fact saints have no one injured i'm even though I was sort of talking up North is probably the stronger one of the two I think Saints sort of have a nice start to the year yeah. and pull it out because North probably nice. don't necessarily know what to expect from the Saints so the Saints might be able to catch them unawares with something unexpected is that from Bananas and Pajamas? <laughs> sounds very familiar that <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah it's interesting that you say that about the Saints no injuries I think last year they probably had one of the worst injury lists so them to be no injuries that's a huge amount of upside I'm still going to say North. The second last game of the round is Hawks versus the Brisbane Lions at the MCG. What are you feeling about this game, first instincts? I'm thinking this could be game of the round. Ooh. I'm going to say this will be very close, hotly contested. Fagan and Clarkson know each other very well. Mm-hmm. Both, have, both lists are very comparable talent-wise, I feel, even though it's probably spread a bit differently. Yeah. I'm going to say Hawthorne probably just because it's at the G. I was going to say the same thing. So in terms of injuries, I'll go through first. No hard week for Hawthorne. Gunston is iffy, and that's a big out if he doesn't play because uh, he's going to be due back around the time of round one. Um, Lions, two years in a row, are very healthy again. I think that was one of the biggest advantages that they had last year, and they've seemed to uh, be, they've made a good start in terms of fitness this year. Um, I agree on the MCG factor. The Lions aren't proven there. I don't think they played too many games there last year. I think they lost badly against Essendon. They lost to Richmond. I don't think they played there other than that. Um, so, and MCG factor makes me think Hawthorne as well. I'm going to tip Hawks by 23. I'm going to say the Hawks by three. So it's going to be a thriller. Game of the round. Interesting. Yep. I like it. Final game of the round is the Eagles and the D's at Nuts. Optus Stadium. <laughs> Two good wins for Melbourne in the Marsh series after a disastrous year last year. Is that a false dawn for them? Is that indicative or do you think they're actually on the way up? Realistically, going to be a lot better than that. Well, not a lot better necessarily, but they're going to be mm. better than they were last year. Bottom two is an anomaly for the amount of talent they've got on that list yeah. and the performance they had the year before. Have they broken the shackles of last year? I think it's going to be yeah, a slow You're not set. breaking those shackles until a few weeks into the real season. No, yeah. Not with Marsh wins. You're not breaking those shackles yeah. off of them. I agree. Well said. Um... Melbourne actually don't mind up the stadium, uh, at least against West Coast. So obviously they got annihilated in the prelim. I think that's an anomaly. They just didn't show up. But the two other games they played there last year was when they uh, were struggling and nearly beat the Eagles in Perth when Liam Ryan took that mark. And uh, and then late in the 2018 season, they actually got the, got the win over the Eagles in Perth. Um, I think the ground holds no fears for them. I'm expecting a good game. Max Gorn's probably going to play because he played in the Marsh game yesterday. So unless anything develops there, I'm going to assume he's playing... Melbourne will put up a good fight. Uh, Eagles are fairly fit with Gov um, likely to play. I think he's playing in March 2 again. The fittest I've seen the Eagles going into a season for a while, is it? You're probably right. Um, there's just a few like younger players injured. Yeah. But uh, as a result of that, I'm going to say Eagles win this by 25 points. But I have respect for Melbourne. I think they'll put up a good fight and we'll just break away at the end. Well, I'd probably agree with that breakaway assessment at the end. Like, I think they can hang on for three, three, well, two and a half, three quarters sort of thing. Yeah. And then Eagles put the clamps on and finish them off. Probably you can get about 20 ahead. All right, guys, those are our tip for round one. Like I said, check out the link in the description or the code or whatever it is to get into the footy t- tipping comp. We'd love to have you this year. And I'm going to d- update these videos with like the winner each week and the same with fantasy like I did last year. So that will be really good fun. Um, and good luck. I hope your team wins unless they're playing West Coast.
They're not, fortunately. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.